Hey guys, George at Soundtrax here, and this week we're going to resume our Operations 101 uh, video series. And this week we're going to talk about the automatic, or what's also known as the train brakes. So let's get started. Now in our past videos, we've talked about adding some momentum into our locomotives to simulate the mass of the locomotive as it moves around their layout. The last one we actually talked about was actually in implementing the independent brake or the brakes that are actually on the locomotive itself. And now when you're using the brakes as a real locomotive engineer, you wouldn't use the brakes that are actually on the locomotive itself to stop the train. Because with several thousand tons behind you pushing against that locomotive, those brakes would have to be changed every time you came to a stop because the sheer mass of that train pushing against just the brakes on the locomotive would eventually wear those brake shoes out faster. So back in the late 1890s, they invented air brakes and the air brakes work to collectively bring the braking system across the entire train. Now, the way this works is that the air pressure, you see those hoses that are connected between all of the locomotives and the freight cars. Now that air pressure is actually sent into the airline to pressurize the line to release the brakes off the wheels. And so instead of applying air to set the brakes, the engineer actually reduces the amount of air in the system so that the brakes would then simply apply. Now this distributes the braking effort across the entire train. So every freight car, when they reduce the air pressure in that line, applies brake shoes on the wheels of those freight cars and then helps collectively drag the train to a stop. Now the good news is with your Tsunami and Bluenami, as I'm gonna use here today, that you can actually simulate this work on your layout. Now while you're running around your layout as a light locomotive and doing your switching in your yard or spotting cars at industry, you typically would use the independent brake like we talked about last time. But in this particular effort, now we're going to come and say we're tied onto our train. Now we're going to use the train brake. Now to do that, we're simply going to apply down here on the bottom of our list, you can see brake select and you'll see that it says IND or independent. Now on your DCC throttle, this is gonna be function 12. When function 12 is off, you're gonna be set to the independent brake. But when function 12 is on, or in this case, when I press this button on the Blue Nami app, then you're gonna go into what's called train brake mode or automatic brake mode. And what you're gonna hear is you're gonna hear the compressor start to cycle as it works to charge the train line. And you'll hear the prime mover notch up as it works to turn that compressor a little bit faster to hopefully charge that air up. Now in the real world, this would take several minutes, probably 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the length of the train, because of course that train line has to be uh, pumped up to about 95 pounds per square inch. But in model train time, it's only gonna take 30 seconds. So when I press this now, you'll hear that diesel engine notch up a little bit, and you'll hear that compressor start cycling in the background as it's working to charge the train line. Now, I haven't moved the locomotive, as you can see in the throttle, but all I did was simply turn on the automatic brake. Now, as I mentioned, this is function 12 on your DCC throttle, and that'll work with the Blue Nami as well. You don't have to use the app if you don't choose. You can use the DCC throttle to run your Blue Nami, so you can simply turn on function 12. You'll hear this effect. So now you hear the diesel engine notch back down. Now, when we're running our locomotive, we're gonna go ahead and start moving here, forward a few speed steps, and you'll see that we have a little bit of momentum so it doesn't immediately jump to speed. But now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply the brakes. Now you can see the brake uh, button right above here. Now on your DCC throttle, this is function 11. So I'm simply gonna press it. You're gonna hear an air brake release and then now you're gonna see the locomotive come to a stop and you'll notice I haven't moved the throttle. So we're gonna go ahead and move the throttle down so that our diesel engine doesn't notch up as it works against the brakes. Now this brake rate is adjustable. Now you can set this in CB118. I have it doing it pretty fast because we just have a small section of track. But for the efforts, I'm gonna go ahead and notch up and you can hear it notch up, then I'm gonna release the brakes, and you'll hear that air brake release and the locomotive start to move. 
Now, if I want to do this from a faster speed, we'll go ahead and get it going a little faster so you can see it. I'll move somewhere around there. Now, when I release, I'm going to apply the brakes. You can hear the air reduction, and you're seeing the locomotive as it slowly comes to a stop. Now, by these settings here, I have CD3, which is my acceleration rate, set to a value of 50, 5, 0. I have my deceleration rate set in CV4 to a value of 100. Now, in CV118, which is actually governing my braking rate, I have that set to a value of 178. And the value of 178 represents a minus 50. So when I apply my brakes, it's going to slow down at a rate of 50, which is 100 minus 50, because that's what I've got as my brake rate of 178 minus 50. So it'll slow down at that rate. Now you can adjust this so that your independent brake will stop more quickly since traditionally you're only pulling a few cars. But when we're doing the automatic or the train brake, typically we're pulling a fairly longer cut of cars. And so you can adjust this for your liking. And then once you find your settings, I encourage you to set all of your locomotives to have the same settings so that that way, as you're running your trains, you get that predictable response. You kind of know when you need to slow down and when you need to set those brakes and come to a stop. So guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. For more information, be sure to check out the user's guide available online at soundtracks.com under the support tab and then documentation, you'll see the link to manuals. Also, if you have any questions or you're just a little bit more confused, feel free to give us a call, 970-259-0690, uh, or shoot us an email at support at soundtracks.com. That's it for this episode of Operations 101. We'll see you next time.